Hi, everybody. This is Mara de los Reyes. Welcome to Hope for a Healed Child. I'm very excited that you joined me this evening with a great man that I get to interview, Dr. Nick Castellano. Thank you so much, Nick, for joining me this evening. I'm super excited just for you to share amazing things with the people that are watching. Thank you, Mara. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, I know just for um, the people watching to know, um, Nick has been just a really pivotal part in my life and my husband's life. We had, um, you know, we had kind of um, been interested in some of the things that I put on here, quantum physics and um, the vibration and, and how we needed to raise our vibration, but we were not studying these things with the word of God. And so what Nick did when we met him, he brought together some of the things that we were studying without God and he brought God right into it. So that's what I want to do for my audience tonight. Nick, that's what I would love for you to do. So if you can introduce yourself so people know um, who you are and how you have the authority to speak on this. Well, uh, my background, um, first, I'm from a large Italian family, six kids from Brooklyn, New York. Um, my mother's Irish, my dad's Italian. And uh, what I've, my background is I've got a master's in biochemistry. I've got a doctorate in philosophy and theology. And I've written a couple of books called Awaken the Sleeper is one of them. And one's, I'm a Christian, what now? And that, that second one's more about why do I keep getting the same things I always got if I'm supposed to, uh, you know, be empowered and everything my hands touch prosper? Why am I not seeing that in my life? And both books are, uh, they talk about quantum physics, neuroscience, and they also talk about now, how do I actually see these things in my life? Because I believe the time for how to's is now. Anybody can know a thing, but then how to apply a thing is a, the important thing. And sometimes it's what we're missing in the churches is we're not taught how. And so people want to know how, because they got it. Yeah, I know I'm supposed to be this and I'm supposed to be this. How do I do that in my life so that I can actually see those things that I know I'm destined and I've been predestined to receive? Yeah, exactly. And I would just like to, um, this is our one of our very worn copies of the book. <laughs> Got too much light, but this is this is. I think this is my husband's, and it's pretty. It's like mine and his are both just underlined and written on. I know I have notes all over mine, but it's an amazing book, Awaken the Sleeper. And um, I just encourage you guys to get the book. It's so so good. There's so much scripture in here that is going to bring science and scripture together, and that's what I love about what you do. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, what I was, um, my background qu quickly was, you know, I was a, a heavy drinker being an Italian. And uh, I would, even though I had all the smarts, my, I was also a nuclear chemical instructor in the United States Navy for 10 years. So I taught nuclear power chemistry. So very aware of atomic things and all of how everything works in the subatomic level. And, um, uh, but you know, the drinking was something passed on from my grandfather, my dad, and uh, somebody had to say no more. So I'm in a prison cell hugging my son through the bars. And uh, I uh, realized, well, look at me, I've got all these degrees. I'm a nuclear chemist and I'm hugging my son through the bars. And so I said, uh, got on my knees and, and said, God, please take this from me. And I think I heard him say, finally, so from that day on, I never had another drink, but that started my uh, search for truth. And I wasn't, you know, I was raised Catholic, so I really didn't know much truth. I just knew what they told us. And I knew that according to them, I was a worm in the dirt because Jesus was up on that cross and look what I did. And uh, so uh, I started seeking truth. And for me, I started seeking it through the only way I knew to seek truth, which was through science. But when I was seeking it through science, I also used the Bible and I translated the Bible from, from English to the Greek and the Hebrew so I could know what it was really saying. Because so many times these 58 different translations that people use are not very accurate to exactly what the word was saying. And it does make a bit of a difference in um, how you receive the word. So <clears throat> that started my 
that started my quest, if you will. And then I went to a thing called Promise Keepers and I was uh, wiped out there, realized that I needed to become a real man. And uh, that's when everything started to change, when I started to see and God was guiding me to all these truths that science, neuroscience and quantum physics had that the new age people were using, but we in the body of Christ were not using because we, as soon as a new ager would use the principle, we would back away and go, oh, it's of the devil, it's of the devil. And yet, so we're, we ended up disempowering ourselves, And so it got me a little crazy. So I said, well, the only way that I can get Christians to use these techniques is to find a scripture that lines up with that technique. And so that's when I began my search on finding the right language and the language of a Christian is scripture so that they could receive the word as truth. And that's pretty much what I do throughout the world. When I go to Saudi Arabia, I've read the Quran so I can understand their ways so that I can speak to them about Jesus in a way they can receive him so they can receive the truth of Jesus. So you've got to not be afraid to learn the language as long as it doesn't influence you. You're there to build a bridge so they can receive Christ in their life. And they usually do that through uh, you understanding their ways. Yeah, that's so good. You know, I'm a homeschool mom and um, I homeschool classically. And that is um, part of that is the base of classical um, education is definitions. The getting to, and that's what I love about your teaching is you give so many basic, really in depth def definitions. It expands on the meaning of something. But I think, too, I just wanted to point out, you know, when when our son was sick and we were searching for healing, um, it's, it's more prevalent almost in that new age realm to uh, have them talk about healing and how people are getting results. And so when you, when we met you and we read your book, it like brought that together. So if you want to talk a little bit about um, maybe the faith, um, I don't know how you want to bring quantum physics and I'm going to let you do some of that. Cause that's well, you know, the, the biggest thing I think was that we have to realize that we do create our reality. And if we don't realize that, see, it, it, it talks in Colossians 1.16 that God created all things visible and invisible. And, and that word for create in that, in that place is bara, B-A-R-A from the Hebrew. And it means to create from that which was not. We, we can't create that way. But we can asa, and that means to create from that which already is. In other words, our job is to take from the unseen, that stuff, that invisible realm that he created, and bring it into the visible realm. I mean, if he's laid everything up in the heavens for us, all our job is to have the faith to bring it from the unseen to the seen. So we have to understand that we create the reality we live in based on the thoughts and the intents of our heart. But then you say, well, I got to make sure that the word is okay with that because God's in charge. He does everything. Now he's done it. He's rested. We're his hands and feet. It's now for us to step up and do our part. And it says in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, for verily I say unto you, whosoever shall uh, say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things he saith what shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he shall say it. So it, Mark tells us that we have power to move a mountain. Just because if we believe it in our heart, that's faith, right? And then here's the hard thing about faith. People believe faith is just, oh, I believe, I sure. No, we're, we're using faith as hope. The word hope is assurance that it's going to happen. Faith is belief with action. Believe as, and then do something as if it's going to happen. That's when you bring the unseen to the seen, when you have that belief and then you act as if. It says with joy, supplication, and what? Celebration or thanksgiving. Why would you thank, be giving thanks to something that hasn't happened yet? Because when you do, you bring it from the unseen to the seen. Not someday, I sure hope, because then you're always living in yesterday. I sure hope, I sure hope, but you're never getting to the place of when it's happening. So you have to celebrate it now. And then you'll find out your tomorrow's different because you're celebrating something in this now moment. And see, it's so important to know this now moment, this right now moment is the only time you have power. It's the only time you're lined up with I am. 
you know, we have a problem in our, in our society that we end up in regret of yesterday and fear of tomorrow, but we have a tough time being in now. And now's the only time we're aligned with Papa God. And now's the only time that we can wield the power that God has for us to wield because we're his hands and feet. But if we can't get into now and we're regretting yesterday and fearing tomorrow, we have no power. Yeah, I would just like to point out that is so key. Those of you listening, like this is one of Nick's, Dr. Nick's big thing is the now. And in the, um, it's Hebrews 11, one, it says now faith and there's no comma. There is no right. comma in that. It says now faith. That really changed my way of viewing that scripture. When I heard that, I was like, wow. I think that's so important. It changed me too. Because every time I, I'd heard it taught, it was now, pause, faith. And well, there's no comma there. It's now faith. There's only one kind of faith that has power. Now faith. Not yesterday faith and not tomorrow faith. But only now faith. And so go ahead. I was just going to say, maybe give a little example. So how does, how can somebody live in a now faith versus yesterday or tomorrow? Well, for me, I create my day every day, right? So, uh, and, and everyone out there can do the same thing I do. You know, we were created for relationship with God. It's the whole reason we were created was to walk in the cool of the garden with him. And it seems like it's the only thing that we don't have time for. Oh, maybe we read a scripture here or there. We read, read the word a little bit. But do we get quiet, sit in this now moment and hang out with Papa God? Can we do that? And see, so the first time I did this, this was, I was like, I'm, I'm going to find out if this is right or not. So I got quiet and I, I saw myself go up to the throne room in my mind's eye when I finally got to this now moment. Now moment is tough to get to because you're meditating, you're, you're listening to your breathing, then you're listening to your heartbeat, then the only thing is you and you can feel the essence of you and then I feel myself going up to heaven, and I go into the throne room. And, you know, I don't want to take you through it because it would take too long. But the point was, when I sat on God's lap and we were chatting, he said to me, what do you want to create together today? And that's when I realized he just wants to co-create with us, that it's all about relationship. So I had this stock and I'll just share and it was, I had 500,000 500, shares of this stock and it, I had it for three years and it still hadn't gone public. And they were talking about making it public, making it public, making it public. And so I told God, let's create this together. He said, he chuckled and okay. And then, you know, I was, I left heaven that day, not kidding. That stock went public for $7 a share, co-creating with God. And then all of a sudden, in one day, I had $3.5 million because I took the time to understand what was more important, hanging out with God or doing my little toily things that I have on my Franklin day timer. Mm -hmm. And you know, the thing I've realized is when I start hanging with God, a lot of those toily things go away because now I don't even have to deal with them because they took care of themselves because I did the thing I had to do, which was spend time with God in the morning. For me, it's early in the morning. Yeah. And um, a lot of the people in the self-development world, like they have no problem with this. Um, this is just some of the things that are taught really basic principles and they don't have any problem uh, getting wealth either. And I just want to point out to those people who might be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he just said that he made millions of dollars and that's what it means to be with God. But guys, the kingdom of God needs our wealth, needs the, needs the wealth to be brought down from heaven and to be used for God's purposes on earth. Amen. And most of us can't receive it because we, we remember the bad things we did. And so how can I receive any wealth? that's been laid up for me. Well, if we believe we're Christians, and I believe we do, then our sin is blotted forward and back. There is no sin. Matter of fact, the, the, the Bible was so amazing that the word sin was changed, the definition. In the Old Testament, sin meant offense against God. In the New Testament, the word is hermantano in, in the Greek, and it means missing the mark, not receiving the prize. That's all it means. You missed the mark. Okay, brush off, repent, which means 
tr let's let's think a little differently. Let's think a new way. So we're going to try it again. Now let's take another shot. Not oh, I'm just a sinner. I'm never going to see it again. No, 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 no. No, that's a that's a quitter. We repent. We aim again, and we take another shot. Yeah, and I just want to read um, a quote from your book. And this is on page twenty eight. It says, "You can't fake a place of peace, joy, and love, and think you will receive anything." Your heart and your head must vibrate in unison, lined up with God through Jesus Christ in peace, joy, and love. And, and then it goes on to say, God told us to focus on these things. And I just love that because it's that, um, it's that vibrating up at the level of heaven into the peace, joy, and love, which you, that's one of your passions to talk about as well. And how important that is as we're doing that in a now moment. Yeah, it, I think a lot of it has to do with a lot of people, and, and especially me, Italian, a lot of uh, uh, ethnicities believe that emotions are in charge of them. But we've got to understand that we're the boss of our emotions. And just because an emotion comes up, it doesn't mean I have to let it take me down the rabbit hole. I say, oh, thanks for sharing. Okay, I see that emotion. Let me see. Now, where did that come from? Why am I feeling that way? Okay, now... I need to get the answer to this. So let's get back into the only place where the answer exists, peace, joy, and love. So that's the kingdom environment, right? Your, your, peace, your, your peace is the environment, joy is your emotion, and love is your weapon, because love conquers all. So we have to get ourselves on purpose back to that place of peace, joy, and love. And how I do that is I read my I am statement, or I, I have my gratitude list, that gets me back. These are tools that you use when you're losing it. Okay, I'm in a bad place. What do I need to do? Okay, let's stop the day right now. Let's get back into a good place of peace, joy, and love. Use my tools. And now I can start the day over again anytime I choose. I don't have to give away a whole day. I just had a bad moment. Yeah, that's so key, Dr. Nick. What you're saying is that you have to be willing to stop your day. You have to be willing to pause and to reflect and go, okay, what just happened? How did I get there? And then kind of do that reset button by getting into a place of gratitude. But so often we're just going, 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 going. We're on this autopilot. We're like, I yeah. can't stop because I've got to do something. And, right. and it, it messes things up. It can mess up in the middle of relationship. It can mess up with our kids, with our spouses, with friends, with people at the grocery store. And, yep. and we have to be more intentional, um, especially so as believers. We become human doings instead of human beings. We forget how to be. And, and one of the most important things, why do I stop? Because I'm resonating now at a place of anger, fear, worry at a low frequency. I'm my, I am physically resonating down there. And don't tell me you can't feel it because you know when somebody walks into a room and they're not in a good place, you can physically feel their energy. Now I'm vibrating down there. What am I going to bring into my life? More things that, uh, more things that give me fear, lack, and worry. Because see, the universe was set up assuming I knew I'm in charge. Assuming I knew that I create my reality. So if you're vibrating at fear, lack, and worry, you must want more things that bring fear, lack, and worry. And so you stay there and you don't stop and you don't catch it. And you don't say, no, 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 no. I'm going to peace, joy, and love because that's where I'll see the things I want to see in my life. But too many of us go down to fear, lack, and worry. And then we have all of a sudden this uh, day that is of the devil. This happened and this happened and this happened and this happened because we never took charge of our emotions and said, no, I'm going to get back into peace, joy, and love. See, emotions want to be in motion, but you're the boss of your emotions. We've it's got to not, understand that. Now, scientifically, <laughs> and I'll just do it quick, just so they know there's science behind it. When, in a, when you uh, have an event happen, you create a picture in your mind. When you have a picture in your mind, that picture uh, has a, an emotion or attached to that picture. Now the hypothalamus in your brain releases these neuropeptides that throw, float through your body and key lock into every cell of your body. And when they key lock into your cells, you vibrate at that frequency so that you can tell when somebody's in a great place or you can tell when somebody's in not so great of a place. You can feel them. And so that great place or not so great brings more of those things back into your life. 
So that's why you can go from glory to glory to glory, or you can believe the old adage that bad things happen in threes. Mm. So if two have happened, all right, and you believe it's truth because you have faith in it, the third will happen because you're you're the creator of this reality that you live in. So can you, because those are creating um, brain uh, patterns, like the, when you keep thinking the same way and it's a negative thought and you're, and every time a similar situation happens and you're going to go down that same pathway. So how do people get out of that? How do they change that groove? You said they it key lock. So how do they like change that? Well, one of the things is you've got to have tools that bring you back into the place of peace, joy, and love. How I, now this is how I do it is right now I start remembering my future. Well, what does that mean, Dr. Nick? Well, I see what I want to happen in my mind's eye. And I see it in the future that it's coming, but I'm doing this in the now moment, but I'm seeing the future. And now I'm so powerful, I'm starting to feel the future and I'm feeling myself in that place of the future. Now, when I'm starting to feel and see I'm in that future, I'm creating this now moment, new axons and dendrites in my brain, new ways that the electrical circuit can travel, new thought patterns. It's the, you know, it's the thought you feed that survives. It's the dog you feed that lives, right? And if you keep feeding that same old negative thought pattern, you're gonna have a super highway of negative thoughts and it turns into a response and it's just the way you show up. But if you capture it, it says capture each thought, and hold it up to the glory of God. If you capture that thought, now you go, huh, I'm going to remember my tomorrow by I'm going to see myself in the tomorrow I want to see myself in. And then the emotions start to be released. And now you're already there. You're already releasing oxytocin in your body, which is a healing chemical. And because you're feeling so grateful about something that hasn't happened yet, but the Bible tells us to do that over and over because we got to understand we are a creative force. Or if we don't believe that, then we're going to be created upon by some other creative force. And that's so good. I just really encourage you guys to get this book because it, it gives so much detail and explains it really well on how to do that. Um, Dr. Nick's given a lot of key tools to you right now, but it does take practice. It yes. takes it takes practice and doing it again and again. And then if you know, you go into that old thought pattern, you just have to shift back and, you know. And that's the big thing you just said. Don't beat yourself up. Okay, you're there. But you know what? You're only there a day this time. Good job. Next time, you're there 12 hours. Good job. Next time, you're there six hours. Next time, you're there only an hour. Next time, what? You captured the thought. Yeah. You never went there. Because... So you're learning how to use those muscles. You're learning how to use your empowerment muscles so you can finally get to the place where you, you know that the emotion you feel, oh, signpost, warning, I'm going down the wrong path. I'm gonna capture that thought. And let's look at it, not push it away. Why do I have that thought about this situation? Something is there, what's going on? Because typically when we push it away, it becomes bigger and badder hiding in the dark than when we bring it out into the light. Yeah. So good. These are so, these things are so important. I wanted you to share your story about your friend in the middle. Oh. Yeah, that's such a good one. And then we're going to go because I feel like that ties right into identity. Okay. My buddy, uh, Darcy Coomer, I, I do a thing called uh, 15 steps of purpose. And I, he took the test 15 steps of purpose because he wanted to know what he was called to do. He had no idea. And everybody, and I do this for businessmen all the time. And he was a businessman. And I said, okay, I'm going to say something to you after I went through it. And I've never said this in my life to anyone. You're supposed to be an evangelist. And I said, and, and he went and his eyes lit up because he knew it was the truth. And he got called to the Muslim nations. Now his normal job, what he used to do was a rodeo clown. So he's a wacko. I mean, he is not afraid of anything. <laughs> and so isn't it amazing? God uses a rodeo clown to go to the Muslim nations to teach Christ, because you gotta be wacko. But he was that guy. I mean, Paul was zealous about his hatred to, to, towards Christians. And he just took that same zeal and turned it in the other direction. David killed the lion and killed the bear. And he just took that same craziness to kill Goliath. So we gotta understand. So he went to, he's, he's at one of the teachings there and 
he's talking about Isa ben Mary. And Isa ben Mary is Jesus, son of Mary, because they don't believe, they believe in Jesus, but they believe that he was born of Mary and he's not of God. But yet they believe he's the only sinless prophet to ever walk the earth. And they believe he's the one coming back at the end of time to bring peace. So they're very similar. They just don't believe in this part of salvation. They don't have that. They don't have their relationship through Christ Jesus. But he is the holiest prophet. They believe that. So he's teaching about Isa ben Mary. And, and this little baby in the front is crying and crying and crying. And Darcy's trying to teach. And so he asks the mother if he can pick the baby up. So she says, sure. And she hands him the baby. He holds the baby. After a couple of minutes, the baby stops crying. So he hands the baby back to the mother and the mother starts screaming. And he's like, oh my gosh, what is wrong? What did I do? Well, the mother's screaming because the baby was mongoloid and now it's a healthy baby. It doesn't have any mong mongoloid tendencies anymore. It doesn't have the Down syndrome look anymore. So they, the mother rushed the baby to the doctors. The doctor says, your baby does not have Down syndrome anymore. That night, in his hotel room, the Taliban set up a guard around his room, and the line to see him was about a mile long of all the people that wanted to see the man of God. Wow. And this is how we change the world. We change the world through the power that we've been given and we give that power and love. But if we're afraid of a Muslim, because God wishes that none should perish and fall short of his glory. So if he wishes that, that's my mandate. And people follow the power. When Jesus preached, he, he taught and showed. He didn't just teach, he taught and then he showed him. And this is what it looks like. And it's time for the sleeper, us, to awaken to the power that he's given us. And stop pushing it away and saying, well, that's new age or that's, uh, that's, that's science. And no, it's ours to use. And it's time to accept the responsibility that goes with that great power. Yeah, that's amazing. And I just love that story. There's going to be so many people encouraged by that story. Um, there's another group that I'm a part of that they, it's all like the incurables, like mm. Down syndrome and all those things, those mm. are the parents that are like, they're like, no way, we're not, we are not partnering with that. We're going to partner with what, who the Lord has made our children to be. So that's such a great story. I love that story. I know you can never get through it without tearing up. I know. I'm sorry. I, no, I just, it's so I good. Stand. And, and that's what should be happening through all of us as we go out into the world and love people that healing power of Christ should be flowing through all of us. So I just love that you share you. that. It's such a tangible story. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, I think so much of this power, though, it comes from this place of identity. And that's what you were asking about. Uh, and, and our identity, you know, unfortunately, our, our identity a lot of times comes from um, other people, or what people say about you. And you see that the problem is you're never gonna believe or know your why, your purpose in life, until you believe or know your I. You'll settle for something that's so much smaller than what you're supposed to be there doing, you know? And, and so, you know, one of the things, me for science that, uh, that I had to understand was that the theory of evolution, it kills um, identity. If, if I came from a protoplasmic ooze that some amino acids accidentally spilled into, then, and th then what value does my life have? This is what the kids are being inundated with. Yeah. So if, if that's a truth, then I have no value. I was an accident. And so that's why youth suicides go up to crazy numbers because they believe, because it's being taught with such zeal, that this is the truth, yet me being a nuclear chemist, uh, it violates the second law of thermodynamics five times. So if a theory, which evolution is a theory, violates a law, you have to throw out the theory. And see the problem with most parents is they don't arm their children with the truth that how this violates 
the second law of thermodynamics of chemistry, that, that all things are going towards a state of chaos. All things are going from less complex, I mean, more complex to less complex. That's how everything goes. That's the law. That's the second. Uh, that's the second. Uh, that's the second law of thermodynamics and chemistry. That everything goes from uh, more complex to less complex. But in evolution, it goes the other way. Mm. So, you know, I could just, I, I, if you want me to, I'll just take you through the five things quick. Sure. Okay. The five things are: simple molecules must evolve into complex molecules. Entropy goes down because it becomes more complex. That's a violation of the law. Complex molecules must evolve into simple organic molecules. Violation of the law, entropy decreases. Simple organic molecules must evolve into complex organic molecules. Entropy decreases, violation of the law. Complex organic molecules must evolve into data, into data storage, self-replicating molecules such as DNA. Entropy decreases, violation of the law. Finally, all these molecules must combine and organize at the same time into a self-sustaining, self-replicating living cell, which now must assimilate food, respirate, grow, respond to stimuli, and reproduce. Huge violation of the law. Evolutionary theory takes great faith because it violates their own laws. So yeah. I, I like to say that, you know, you know we know... Hebrews 11, when now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I say Darwinism 11, one is uh, now the faith of the evolutionist is the substance of fossils hoped for <laughs> and the evidence of missing links never found. Wow. You know, I have to just share this really quick. I um, had never told or talked really to um, my eight-year-old about evolution. And I shared it with him the other day. I said, you know, we were reading a Bible story and I said, you know, um, some people believe we come from monkeys and he burst out laughing. He That's was awesome. like, he thought it was hilarious. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. Like he knows truth. And it's so deep that he, he's like, a lie is like laughable. That's so great. Yeah. So parents, oh my goodness, you know, there's so many lies that violate the laws of God um, that are happening in schools right now. So really be prayerful over your children. I know today is a national day of prayer. So Nick, if you would close us out in prayer and pray cool. specifically, just even for um, the parents who are hoping for their heal child to be healed, that would be amazing. Amen. You want me to do that? Ready? Yep. Dear Father God, we thank and we praise you today. We thank you that you've given us all power, dominion, and authority through Christ Jesus. We thank you that what we lay hands on will vibrate and line up with the way it should be. That when we lay hands on someone, that you are working through us. And based on our emotional state, which we will be in peace, joy, and love, when we, when we lay hands, we have the expectation that it is done. There'll be no trepidation. There'll be no fear. Just thanksgiving, knowing it is done. So we thank you for this power right now, Papa God. We thank you that there are no incurable diseases because dis-ease just means we're, we're, we're not at ease. And you know what? That affects us and puts us in fear and lack. And that puts us in, in a place that we are, we're not destined to be. So we say right now that we believe that we take our responsibility, we take our responsibility, we take our rightful place, we take our place as the brother of Christ and as a son of God. We take that place right now, knowing that when we lay hands, when we believe it to be, it will be, and we see it done, and we give thanksgiving and praise, and it's all for your glory, all to magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I felt the Holy Spirit. I hope that you guys did too as well. Dr. Nick, thank you so much for joining me this evening. I just love all of your teaching and your heart. I'm going to post your website link as well so people can um, get connected with you. And I just encourage you guys again, get the book um, and get the other one as well. We actually had it, but gave it to our older son who read it right away. So love that. All so right, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Have a wonderful evening. All right. Bye-bye.